found that uh, Mountain Bell is really interested. Uh, you know, we're a changing company, and we really need to know what various customer groups think, and you're clearly a leader. Would you be willing to, you know, sit with me uh, two, three times a year and just tell me how things are striking you, share a little information with me, I'll let you know what the company's up to, uh, how, however you go about that. How do you do that approach? Well, I'm not sure in a half an hour we can go into that. All I want to do at this point is to alert you to this factor. The way that approach is initially made, and that entry is initially made, will have an effect on that relationship throughout its life. Throughout its life. First impressions really are what the old proverb says. We need to know how to do that. We need to know how to make that approach, and then we need to know how to make the contract. Now, when it comes to the contract, once we get them to agree, we ought to put that contract in quotes in writing with some kind of a follow-up letter. And that we ought to be able to develop as a pretty standard form. <clears throat> At least the body of the letter. In other words, you call somebody up. I assume that's how most of these approaches will be made, possibly in person. But you call them up either way. Then we need to send them a note, because that letter now is key. The letter puts on paper the fact that Mountain Bell is a consumer-driven kind of an organization. We are working harder than ever to really get to know the key leaders in our communities. And you know, you know look, you guys are better at this BS than I'll ever be. So you know what to put in the letter. But we need then to make a contract with them to agree what it is, and then we need to reduce it to writing. So that they have in hand a piece of paper I just want to emphasize, though, that the old business of leaving this to sort of chance won't work in this new context, because it will leave people wondering what's in it for them and what's in it for Mountain Bell. And we need to make it clear. We should not try and cover up what's in it for Mountain Bell. But we can present it in such a way that they see that what's in it for Mountain Bell is congruent with what's in it for them, and it's worth it for us to talk. And I think we need to make very clear on entry and contract here. That's the first part of any presentation. What we do after that doesn't, isn't as important, truly. Because if we don't do that right, anything we say after that won't really matter. They'll always be skeptical and it'll be very hard to build trust. Identifying the opinion leaders, having a list. I tell my clients today and work with them to build such a list that they need to actually have in a file, or of course today on a computer file, who are the opinion leaders on every issue? Who is their cousin and their sister? Who do they have lunch with twice a week? We not only need to know who those opinion leaders are, but the environment that they live in. What's their network? And we can do that now. We have tools like computers and new research techniques. So we don't have to be in the dark anymore. You know, I've concluded in these three days that you're lucky to have a DREG issue up. And let me tell you why. This program clearly goes far beyond DREG. But if you didn't have a big issue like DREG, you know, we'd kind of limp along with it and we'd put it in place and we wouldn't have these sharp timetables that we've been given. I think you're fortunate because I don't see DREG as a be all and end all and I hope you don't. Obviously, you've got to make a total commitment to it and get it done, but what you're making a total commitment to isn't just that one piece of legislation, is it? It's a commitment to a different way of doing business, to a different way, in fact, of treating other people and of asking them to treat you in a different way. And so that's why I say I think you're lucky to have DREG on your agenda as a hot issue now that you gotta do something with, because it's gonna hone your lobbying, your constituency-relating skills quickly so then we can go beyond that after we've got DREG and keep those skills in place to really change the company to this dream that we all have of a company that's easy to do business with and that is motivated and really operated according to the principles of the people out there that we're trying to serve. So while DREG is important, the point is that 
Well, I can't spell it, but it's still important. The point is that we're going beyond that. We're going beyond that with this program to a number of other issues and, and beyond those issues to other issues because once you get into this mode of doing things, we're then in a, in a synchronous situation with the public. We're meeting their needs and values. And if we can ever achieve that, it seems to me we're very close to the ultimate success that an organization can even hope for. But you know, actually there's another way of looking at this too. Dereg is our issue. And when you get out there, you're going to run into their issues, which are maybe not even on our agenda. We hope they haven't dreamt up some new ones. Maybe they'll just repeating, be repeating old issues you know about. But just start to think now of the breadth and the power of this program. We're going to deal with this key immediate need. We're going to go beyond that. We're going to find out what their issues are so we can do some things with them. Then we're going to do some reporting and some responding based on this as well as communicating and persuading. And I personally, as a professional, am ex very excited about this program. You may not realize it but you are really on the cutting edge of how we have traditionally run organizations in American society. There are very few organizations that are as far along as you are in this whole idea of really taking the public into our organization, of making it a partnership. And I mean that very sincerely. I've been dealing with this issue a long time. I think I understand it fairly well, and I think you have a just a fantastic opportunity and of course that's one of the rewards for you and I think there are a lot of things in it for you as individuals one of the things I think that ought to be of value to anyone in this program is you're going to learn some valuable skills you're going to learn some things that no matter what you then go on to do in this company in your own business in retirement whatever are going to be useful to you because we're talking now about those skills that make this world go around and it must be easily apparent that you can use these in a lot of ways I think you're going to increase your job security, frankly. I mean, if you're kind of the key contact with a big constituency out there, I doubt you'll be on the next RIF list. I hope management wouldn't do a thing like that. I think you're going to get a lot of satisfaction out of it, too. Because I'm serious. When I say you're on the cutting edge of how organizations are run, I don't know, maybe you don't like being on the cutting edge. Maybe I'm just speaking more for myself. But most people, you know, you like to be in something that's really new and hot and working. And I believe you're going to find that. Oh, I don't mean you're not going to come home from a lot of these meetings saying, oh my God, how'd I ever get into this? Of course, I mean, every job has that kind of challenges. You have all the capabilities you need to get this DREG bill. And I, I have to tell you, I think I may have already mentioned this. Uh, we worked with, uh, with Denver when DREG first was uh, charted as a goal. And we were brought in and asked to put together a little strategy that would sell this in all seven states. Well, after several months of kicking that one around, frankly, I was very skeptical. I was very skeptical. And when I came up here two, three days ago, I'm not skeptical anymore, but I, you know, every state is different. I wasn't sure how you were going to do in Wyoming. And having seen the way you've laid out the program and having seen the thought that went into it and having seen your willingness to change it, to make it work as it goes, and having met all of you, I think you're going to have the accomplishment in about a little over a year of seeing this bill passed. I think you can do it. And I'm not just blowing smoke. I'm not paid to say this. I could get up here and say, hey, listen, gang, you better bring me back up for another four days, you know, or else you won't get it done. Now, that would be the better way to handle it, wouldn't it? But I don't think you need it. We've talked about all the theories. Now we're down to where the rubber meets the road. What are you going to say and do and look like and feel when you go out there and are ringing that first doorbell, so to speak, and then all the doorbells after that. 